Hey guys, Mike and Barry here. We watched the FRC kickoff today and wow, they brought a lot this year. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited about it. Obviously, there's no reason for us to actually build a robot in three days this season since most of the robots that were built last year, you can use them again this year. Yeah, and we're all looking a little different after a wild year last year. You got some deadlines that are going to be coming up on March 4th. You have a couple of different things that you're going to have to submit. First up are the judge deadlines, which we're not really going to talk much about those. Those are some of the normal awards that you're used to seeing, but then there's a whole other set of things you're going to have to submit. But first thing, March 4th, judge awards. Things are going to be a hair different though. You might be tempted to build a robot, tweak it, do those skill challenges. If you submit your skill challenges and don't submit your judge awards, they don't even count the points. So whatever you do, make sure now it's a plan. Start going to the rules now. And then after you submit your judge awards, you can submit your skill set challenge awards all through the month of April. And those are going to be ranged from all sorts of things where we're going to dive more into in this video from autonomous mode challenges to time trial kind of challenges where you're trying to shave off just a few more seconds on each time trial. First has come up with a plan to put us into different groups. There'll be about 30 teams per group. And the way you find out what group you're going to be in is super simple. First, you take your team number, find the prime factors of it, divide it by your birth date, add on the current moon phase. The Game Design Committee is giving you the opportunity to design your own game and they ain't yanking your chain. You have the opportunity to come up with your own game and then submit it by March 4th. I have this great idea where every robot starts off with a chain and they go into a field element and then they put it in there and then it releases more chain and you go score those to the other chains. I call it chain reaction. Submit your designs now. You don't want to be the weakest link. So this year first came up with five skill challenges that you can do at school, at home, outside, in a safe environment. What you're going to need to do is have these markers. Now I made this guy out of some cardboard that I took from a box. It's two and a half inches by two and a half inches and then about six inches tall. So this is the, the rough size that you want to do. You have to make sure it contrasts on video. So in this case, we just put some wrapping paper on it and a pretty bow. Now what we did realize while messing around today is that Bottles are almost the same. As you can see, they're about a quarter of an inch wider, but they're a little taller. Honestly, this might be the good way to go because you can just put water and sand in it and they've got a heavy base to them. These are the minimum dimensions, but you don't want to get much larger than it because some of these skill challenges, mm -hmm. you're going to have to be navigating around the markers and you don't want to accidentally hit one just because they're too big. Now, pretty much every year we use carpet. But with this skill set challenge, it says you can use any surface. So what that means to you and your robot is that if you realize that your robot's having a little bit of trouble turning because you have too much traction against the ground, mm -hmm. you don't have to use carpet. You could use the sidewalk. You could use anywhere that has a large enough surface. You could use a basketball court, tennis court. If you're having trouble turning, maybe try using a surface that isn't quite as much friction against your wheels. Last year, you had to build a pretty complicated power port to go for things. They made it simpler this year. You can actually just make a 2D one. You can use cardboard and just kind of mock it up. The way that they score things is that the ball has to be over 50% in the middle to get those extra points. You can see more about that in the manual. Another thing to check in the manual is that you don't necessarily have to have all your infinite recharge components on your robot. For instance, with the skill set challenge, there's not going to be any climbing. Take your lifter off the robot so that way you make your robot a little bit more speedy and concentrate on the things that are necessary to meet those challenges. Speed, speed, speed. That is what all of these skill challenges are about. So figure out how to go quick. The first skill challenge, Galactic Search. What you're going to do is flip a coin and it's going to determine whether you're going to pick up red or blue power cells. Then you're going to run your autonomous and it's actually going to go collect those balls and go to the end zone. The second the bubber hits the zone with those three balls, you stop your timer. The fastest time wins. In the AutoNav Challenge, teams program their robots to drive three different paths as fast as possible using their markers in the middle of the field. In the barrel racing path, you will have three markers in the field where your robot will first make a right turn and two left turns as it navigates its way from the starting position back to the end position. In the solemn path, the markers are all in the center of the field and you're making a giant exaggerated figure eight trying to avoid all those markers. Will you go around, make a loop around the last one and then make your way back? The last auto nav challenge is a little bit different from the other two. It's called the bounce path. You need to go up, touch one of the markers, avoid other markers on the way to go touch the other one, and then you avoid markers and then go touch the last one, and then you end on the other side of the field. This auto nav challenge actually provides an opportunity for some drivetrain configurations you might not have considered. For example, if you go back to 2008, many teams like Team 1098 
used what was called a rack and pinion drive or Ackerman steering. Very similar to your car steering, it gives the advantage that your wheels are actually moving right and left. And instead of actually having a tank drive where one side's going forward, one side's going back, your robot is constantly moving forward. So that means in a turn or going around and navigating around, you are constantly maintaining the forward momentum and all the speed that you build up stays with you throughout that entire drive. Now with the hyperdrive, we're taking things to plaid. The Hyperdrive Challenge, it's basically the AutoNav Challenge, but you get to drive. There's another course added on there, it's called the Lightspeed Circuit Path. With the Lightspeed Circuit Path, you actually do two laps. I think all of these are gonna be a ton of fun for the whole team to drive, even if you're not the fastest driver. The next skill challenge is Interstellar Accuracy, where you're giving 15 balls and you have to try to score as many of them as you can within five minutes. The catch is that there are four scoring zones, each one a little bit further away from the target than the last one. Your, each turn you have three balls loaded into the robot to go and score and shoot them. And then you go back to the reintroduction zone, load them up with three more balls, go to the next zone, score three more, and so on and so forth. And then the last one, you have three balls that you can shoot anywhere that you want on the field. The final skill challenge is the power port challenge. It's basically infinite recharge, but you get one minute of drive time. You can shoot as many balls, get as many points in that time as possible. Up to two human players can introduce power cells onto the field from the reintroduction zone. You might want to try to pull a fast one and think that they can just roll the balls to the robot, but there's actually a rule in there that says you can't create a loop that just keeps the robot in one spot. So first made it really easy for how they are cal calculating the overall scores uh, for the skill challenges. They have the raw scores that you report, and then they take those raw scores and they convert them to computed scores. Uh, then they determine the computed score range for the group and perform an outlier test for the group. And then they convert each team's raw score to a bounded score and determine the bounded first and bounded last based on the group and compute the scores for each team c round two decimal places barry these five skill challenges pff, i was super surprised but i cannot wait to see what these teams do yeah plus we get the second chance to play infinite recharge which is going to be very similar to last year mm -hmm. with splitting hairs a little bit on scoring changes from last year we miss you guys hopefully we'll be together soon but if not we just can't wait to see what you guys submit championship in july hopefully we can see you there Infinite Recharge, cut number two. Stay safe, everyone. Pretty much every year we use carpet. <laughs> That's the pivot. <laughs> Okay, now, now that I know what you're going to say for the pivot, great, let's go.